So if you're at home, switch on the button that says I am happy for you to record. If you're catching up later, welcome. So we're starting in a seated posture. It doesn't have to be cross leg. It can be the seated posture that works best for you. Um, try to make sure that your hips feel nice and uh, released. So you might be better going wide leg if cross leg feels a little tight for you. Let's begin by resting the backs of the hands to the insides of the thighs, turning the palms up towards the ceiling. And just take a moment to let either your focus um, just blur, or if you're happy to, close your eyes. Just gonna have a couple of moments of quiet. So that you can set yourself an intention You've made yourself a promise that for the next hour we will focus on the body, on the breath. And it's very natural, very normal that from time to time, little thoughts will drop in unannounced. Little prompts from your to-do list will ask for your attention. So let's make a commitment that every time you have that interruption, Take a deep breath in and as you exhale, visualise that you're just pushing that interruption to one side and we'll come back to it later. Start to slow the breath down, deepening the inhalation and lengthening the exhalation. So for those of you who've been practicing with me for quite some time, try to avoid the temptation of going through the motions here. It's not really about deepening the inhalation and lengthening the exhalation. It's really about observing the breath. What's the point of taking that deeper, slower breath in? And do you notice how it feels as you take your time to slowly release that breath out? The intention here is to fully land in your body, to tune in to the here and now, reconnecting the body and the breath remaining aware of the space that surrounds you. Accepting those familiar noises in the background. Knowing that there's nothing else we need to change. There's nowhere else we need to be. There's nothing else we need to do right now. We're simply reconnecting the body with the breath. Now let's not get too airy-fairy. Let's either blink the eyes open or take a moment to just sharpen your focus again. And check in again with your posture. Notice if you've sunk a little more deeply into this space. Think about lengthening through the spine, lifting the weight of the ribcage off the belly. Inhaling now to squeeze the shoulders up towards the ears. Exhaling to slowly release the shoulders back and down. A nice deep breath in as you lift the shoulders up. This time on the exhale, just let them drop. Squeezing up on the in-breath, letting go on the out breath. Isolate the right shoulder as you lift that shoulder to the ear. Then again, that little bit of control as you roll the shoulder back and down. Keep working on that right shoulder, drawing little circles here. Just feeling that little bit of release into the right shoulder on top of the shoulder joints. As you release that shoulder down, bring your focus to the left. Inhaling to lift that shoulder up, then again controlling that roll back and down. Let's isolate for three full circles here. Often feels a little more natural on one side than the other. So just let that happen. 
go with the flow. Let's lift both shoulders up now. Roll those circles as we keep the shoulders together, taking the circles back, then changing direction, bringing the circles forward. Starting to widen the space between the shoulder blades, releasing the neck a little. One more time to squeeze the shoulders up, then a big release, let the shoulders go. So we've started to warm up and, and soften up the space at the back of the neck. So take a moment now to just gently lower the chin towards the chest. There's no expectation for the chin to fully rest on the chest. Work through two or three breaths to let the head become heavy. It almost feels as though you're pulling the space between the shoulder blades, creating a little stretch here. Let's roll the chin up towards the right shoulder. Then roll from that right shoulder to the left shoulder, almost as though you're tracing the line of the collarbone. A little bit of crunching in the neck is fine. Bring the head back again to centre. Then as you lift the chin, be mindful that we're not lifting the chin up and looking at the ceiling. Keep the top of the head parallel to the ceiling. Inhale to lift and lengthen, lifting the uh, rib cage from the belly again. Then bring both hands behind the lower back. So we're going to come into an interlock behind the lower back, squeezing the shoulder blades together, keeping the shoulders down so we're not lifting the collarbones. On an in-breath, feel the uh, rib cage widen. On an out-breath, draw the tummy button in and draw the hands up towards the middle back. So we're increasing the stretch over the front of the body. Let's release that, allow the hands to drift back to the lower back. We're going to repeat that action, taking care this time that we don't lean forward, that we don't let the head become heavy. So keep the back of the head lined up with the tailbone, widen the chest, lift the hands away from the lower back, the middle back, open through the chest. Then really spring the hands back again towards the lower back. Beautiful. Separate the hands, place the hands just either side of the hips. Inhale once more to lift up and lengthen. Let's keep that right hand behind the right hip. Bring the left hand to rest on top of the right knee. Lift and lengthen out the sit bones. Then as you exhale, just take, take a little balance over the right shoulder. So we're leading with the rib cage rather than the head. Trying to keep that shoulder in check. We're not leading with the shoulder. Release, keep it nice and low. Simply going to swap opposite hand to opposite knee. Left hand behind the left hip. Lift up and lengthen. Then follow the side of the rib cage. Sometimes it takes two or three breaths to get into that full release here. As you exhale, release. Bring both hands to rest onto the knees. So we've kind of got something to hold on to. Inhaling to lift up, exhaling to draw the tummy button in and roll through the spine, nodding the chin towards the chest again. Keep pushing the lower back towards the back of the room. Then inhale, you're pulling with the hands onto the knees as you lift the sternum forward, keep the shoulders back and down, then take the gaze up towards the ceiling. So exhale, rounding through the spine, really finding that little bit of space in the lower back, then inhaling, lifting, opening, drawing your gaze towards the ceiling. On the next exhalation, engage the core, but rather than a full curl, we'll come back to a seated position, inhaling now to lift both arms overhead. So a seated hastasana. So again, the shoulders remain relaxed. The lengthening happens as we press through the fingertips, draw the shoulder blades together. We feel that little bit of lift under the rib cage into the side of the waist. This is quite a heating posture. 
So focus on that inhalation to cool the body down. The exhalation to release any tension. Let the right hand take hold of the left wrist. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, you're always pulling that wrist over the midline of the body, keeping the sit bones square, tucking the chin now in towards the armpit, turning your gaze over towards that left side. Inhaling to lift and lengthen back to centre, opposite hand to opposite wrist. So lifting, lengthening, exhaling to release, then turning to tuck the chin into the armpit. Just checking on that deodorant, it's still working. Then inhale, lift and back to centre. Bring the hands now to an Anjali Mudra in front of the heart. Shoulder blades drawn together. Beautiful. Inhale, lift and lengthen out of the sit bones. Exhale, soften the shoulders, engage the core. Inhale to keep that length through the spine. On the exhalation now, start to hinge forward. So we shouldn't be feeling this in the hips. It shouldn't feel tight in the hips. There might be a little bit of resistance in the inner thighs, perhaps in the hamstrings. We want to ensure we've got a diagonal line from the back of the head to the tailbone. And with every out breath, we're just bringing the forearms towards the floor. So in an ideal world, the elbows will reach the floor, the forearms will connect. On the next exhalation, separate the hands, bring the palms forward, take the head a little lower, is deepening into this space. Keep drawing the shoulder blades together. On an inhale, lengthen through the spine, start to lift the head, pushing into the palms of the hands. On the exhale, engage the core, walk the hands back towards the ankles. Switch over the leg cross for those of us who have stayed in this cross-legged position. And just take a moment on the opposite side. Bring both hands behind the hips, draw the shoulder blades together. So position one is simply to lift the sternum to bring your gaze up towards the ceiling. Keep drawing the shoulder blades together, opening the heart space. As you exhale, bring your gaze towards the front again. You might want to take a little more weight onto the palms of the hands, draw the shoulder blades together. Your choice whether you repeat the opening through the heart space or if you want to get a little bit into the hip flexors, press the shins towards the floor, lift the bottom from the mat and open. We're going to pause here for another full breath, opening, finding that release through the front of the body. Then as you exhale, release, bring the sit bones towards the floor. Lift and lengthen in centre, extend the right hand away. Lift the left arm up. So we start with a diagonal line. We try to keep that diagonal line as far as possible. It might help to just turn your palm so that you are gathering the ear towards the direction we're travelling in. We're bending that right, right elbow in towards the floor, lifting up over the midline of the body. So we're keeping a diagonal line, pressing through the fingertips, tracing that line from the fingertip through the side of the body all the way down to that left sit bone. Then inhale to lift, come back to centre. Extend the hand the opposite way. So start with an open heart. As you exhale, soften the elbow towards the mat, lift and lengthen over the centre of the body. Every out breath, we're taking a little more space. Every in-breath, we're deepening the stretch to the side of the waist. Inhale again to lift and lengthen back to centre. Let's bring both feet together, so coming into a Baddha Konasana. Usual rules apply. The further the feet are away, the kinder it will be on your hips. The more you want to open into the hips and into the inner thighs, you want to drag the heels a little closer. So, Take hold of the toes or the ankles or the shins, wherever it's comfortable for you. The first action is to widen the knees so we create more space, inhaling to lift and lengthen, 
Then as you exhale, start to draw the upper body forward. I'm just going to let someone else in. So there's always a temptation when we're easing forward to almost try and curve the back so that we can get deeper. So let's try to resist that temptation. The intention is to follow from the sternum and then ease a little deeper in towards that space. Lifting through the sternum, easing a little deeper. You know the point at which it is enough for you. On the next out breath, engage the core. Inhale to lift, lift, lift. Come back to centre. We're going to keep hold of the right foot. Push through the heel. I personally find it easier to extend the opposite arm. It sets a reminder to keep lifting the upper body, widening through the sternum, pressing through the heel to get into the back of the hamstring. Lovely. Nice, good control. Then bring that foot back to centre. Switch over opposite hand to opposite foot. The key is to remain on the bony parts of the sit bones, not to roll back onto the tailbone. So keep lifting through the sternum, engaging through the core, top of the head parallel to the ceiling. Then bring that heel in. You know what comes next. I've got a glass table behind me, so this could go horribly wrong. Let's just hope that my technique is up to the challenge. Lifting through the sternum, I find that, that bit really hard, not crushing the belly. So we're going to stay here for a further three, for two, for one more, then bring the soles of the feet together. <laughs> Amazing, it's like, oh my God, can I finish it? Lift up and lengthen, exhale, hinge into that space. For whatever reason, that feels a lot easier now than it did a minute ago. Then lift and come back to centre. Lovely. I'm going to do one further seated pose. I prefer to be side on when I demonstrate this one. So we're going to do a Dandasana pose. So Dandasana, when we're in a seated pose, uh, where we feel it is really the back of the hamstrings. Sometimes that can translate into the knees lifting up. So it's okay to have a soft bend in the knees, i.e. we don't want to lock the knees out, but it's kind of cheating if you allow too much spring. So let's think about spreading the back of the thighs, pushing the back of the calves against the mat, lifting the toes up towards the ceiling, but the heels remain relaxed on the mat. And then visualize that you've got a kind of set square from the back of the head to the tailbone. So sometimes imagining that you're leaning against a wall can be helpful here. So getting into it is fine. That's quite comfortable. What starts to happen is as you try to maintain that lovely straight line, it starts to get a little bit achy on the back of the legs. Well, it does for those of us who are not very flexible on the back of the legs. Keep lifting and lengthening out of the sit bones. On the next exhalation, mindfully engage the core as you lift the hands up to shoulder height. Shoulder height is sufficient. And I want you to watch the shape that we make here through the, the length of the back. So on the out breath, the intention is to extend the fingertips forward, but we're not going to go so far so fast that this happens because that's not doing anything. So we keep that lovely line from the back of the head to the tailbone. With each subsequent out breath, we're gathering a little more space, lengthening on the inhale, reaching a little deeper on the exhale, but trying not to curve that upper back. It's really hard to do. Every out breath, just challenging yourself a little more. Then on the inhalation, lifting the arms up overhead keeping the ears in between the upper arms, pressing through the fingertips. Notice again, straight lines all around. Then as you exhale, bring the hands either side of the hips to give us a little bit of release for the lower back. Just shuffle the bottom forward, roll onto your back. We're not going to stay on our backs. And we're just going to hug the knees in towards the chest. 
So have that little rock and roll from one side to the other. Return to centre. And I'm just going to replay that Dandasana posture, but do it the opposite way. So obviously it's really easy now to keep the back of the head and the back of the tailbone connected to the mat because it's a nice solid uh, position. What's going to be trickier is now creating that right angle with the legs. So we'll do it one leg at a time. That isn't necessarily easier, but just so that we can feel the tension where we're tighter. So I'm going to keep the left knee bent and extend the right heel up towards the ceiling. So the foot is in flexion. And if you can see yourself on the screen, it might help. You can just feel it perhaps. You want to visualise that straight line from the back of the heel to the back of the tailbone, knowing that your spine is nice and straight. Keep pressing through the heel. Then bend the right knee. Let's do the same on the left leg. So you might think actually one leg feels a little bit easier than the other. So what we're not going to do, we're not going to beat ourselves up that we can't get the legs fully straight. We're going to recognise the leg that feels the tightest and that's as far as we're going to go when we do both feet up. So let's press both heels up towards the ceiling. My right leg is a little tighter than my left. So I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a bend in the knees. Keep pressing through the heels, soles of the feet parallel to the ceiling. Check in while you're in this position that you haven't put tension in the body by lifting the shoulders off the floor, by clenching the jaw. We should be relaxed through the upper body. All the work is happening down through the back of the legs and into the core, supporting the weight of the legs. Inhale to point both toes. Exhale to flex. Inhale to point. Exhale to flex. Keep pressing through the heels. We'll get the right knee now, bend the right knee, draw that knee in towards the chest. Hands can either be behind the thigh or on top of the shin. Then replace the right foot on the floor, knee is bent. Draw the left knee in, hug that knee in towards the chest. We're going to keep that knee drawn in towards the chest, but we're just going to use the left hand to direct that left knee out towards the left side. So again, you're just kind of getting into this space in the inner thigh, creating a little bit of room in the hips. But we're not pummeling the hips, we're just gently working in a natural range. Draw that left knee in, replace that left foot to the floor. Let's just repeat that little, that little side extension on the right. So taking the right knee out to one side. You might notice that you've rolled onto the right side. So bring the back of the hips square, the back of the shoulders square. Bring that knee back into centre, hug both knees into the chest. Then draw little circles with the knees, opposite directions, changing direction so that we're going forward then back. Then replace both feet to the floor. Beautiful. That's your warm up. Let's roll over onto one side and then we're going to come up into a standing position. So for the purposes of recording, I will come to the end of the mat because we're going to be using the full length of the mat. Beautiful. So let's make sure that we've got a good solid base for our mountain pose to begin with. So remember that for Tadasana, typically for women, we are better with a hip width distance apart. Your hips are not the size of a bus. So let's represent the hips by finding that space, heels hip width apart, insides of the feet parallel. Let's not exaggerate that. Keep the knees nice and soft. Bring the hands onto the hips. As you exhale, hinge forward. So here's another version of the um, Dandasana posture, a standing version. 
So we're pressing the sit bones towards the back of the room. Of the three versions we've done, this is by far the most challenging for me because my hamstrings are very, very tight. Let's stay in this uh, parallel position so that the chest is parallel to the floor. Peel the right heel off the mat. So all you're doing is taking a little bend in that knee, then replacing that heel to the floor, transitioning to the opposite. So you're kind of walking through the feet, just enjoying that little bit of a bent knee to soften the hamstrings. Then once more, we'll bring both heels to the floor. We'll lift the tailbone again. We push the sit bones to the back of the room. We'll gently draw the shoulder blades together. Extend the right arm forward now, ear to the inside of the right upper arm pressing through the fingertips, pushing the sit bones to the back of the room. So again, just tightening that hamstring stretch. Bring the left arm forward. So both arms reaching away from the shoulders, pressing through the fingertips. Try not to drop the upper body down, keep that 90 degree angle, pressing the sit bones towards the back of the room. Use the breath here to cool down as you exhale. Grab hold of both elbows, soften the knees, hinge the belly onto the thighs, tuck the chin under, and just hang here for a moment in this right dog pose. Bring both palms back to the thighs, draw the shoulder blades together. Exhale, draw the tummy button in. Inhale, push into the thighs, unhinge by lifting the chest up. Coming back into your mountain pose. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So now we're going to take the right foot back. So we start in our mountain pose, striking the right foot back, having a glance down to make sure that both toes are facing forward. My back foot always rolls out. So come up onto the ball of the foot, replace the heel, you will find it slightly easier to take the feet wider because you've got a wider base. So if you're feeling a bit wobbly, don't have your feet stacked one in front of the other because it just makes it a little bit more challenging. Both hands again to the hips. So the action here is to keep that left leg long. That doesn't mean that we're locking the knee, but it does mean that we're just making sure that we're not collapsing into a bend. As you exhale, hinge. Try to keep the shoulders parallel to the floor. So if we're tight on this left leg, what might happen is you might find that your right shoulder really wants to take you further. Keep the shoulders parallel and we go to the point where we can feel the stretch, but we're not uh, compromising by curving the spine. Lengthen the sternum, exhale, hinge a little deeper. See if we can get it to a 90 degree angle. Beautiful. Now, as you exhale, start to take a little bend in that front knee and bring the fingertips towards the floor. Now, I say fingertips because if you bring your hands down, you'll overextend on that front knee. Pick up your back foot, strike that foot a little further back, come into a 90 degree angle on the left knee, so that means that the knee doesn't travel any further forward than the heel. Shoulder blades drawn together. So the back heel is up, you're on the ball of that foot. Shoulder blades drawn together. Lower that back shin down. Come onto the top of that right foot. Lift the hands off the mat. Beautiful. So nice little bit of hip action going on here. And it's not outward extension, it's front, it's hip flexor. So it's opening into the thigh. Be careful here that you don't lean too far back because you'll feel it on the lower back, but try to maintain again that lovely plumb line. Bring the hands to an Anjali Mudra in front of the heart. As you inhale, lift the arms up towards the ceiling. Now at this point, I know you're focusing on your balance, but let's just check in that that left knee is somewhere between the second and third toe that it hasn't collapsed in. Beautiful. 
Then on the out breath, hinge forward, replace both palms to the floor. Turn that right toe under, strike the left foot back, come into a parallel plank. So that means bottoms are not up in the air. You'll be doing yourself a lot of favours if you keep the elbows soft. If you lock the elbows out, you will fatigue far quicker. Wide through the chest, engaged in the core. One further full breath rotation. Then as you exhale, lower down, bringing the knees, the chest, the chin, keeping the bottom up. Then we're not going to go straight into cobra. We're going to turn the toes to bring the thighs towards the mat. Bring the elbows either side of the chest, palms either side of the head, shoulder blades drawn together. Push down into the palms of the hands. Inhale, lift the chest forward. Beautiful. Turn in the corner of the right shoulder. Inhale to look forward, turn and look over the left shoulder. Inhale to look forward. Just check in that the fronts of the thighs are connected to the mat. The belly is lifted off the mat, the sternum is reaching forward. Then on the out breath, lower down. Pick up the palms so that the palms are now either side of the chest. Draw the elbows in so that we're not going into some kind of weird press up position. Push into the palms, lengthen back, come into a lovely long child's pose here. So we want to stretch again through the side of the body into the underarms. So keep the palms stuck to the mat. Push the sit bones towards the heels. Rest the ears between the upper arms. Work with the breath. So with every out breath, you're just taking the sit bones a little deeper lengthening through the side of the body. Then inhaling, lifting up into an all fours position, knees under hips, wrists under shoulders, engaging the core so that we're not just letting the belly flop in free form. Watching out for that curve in the back. Try to imagine that we're going to place a tray of drinks on your back so if there's any rounding there, they'll all tip off nice and long. Take the right foot back, turn the toe under, press the heel to the floor. So we've had the hamstring stretch. Let's now have that beautiful calf stretch into the soleus perhaps. Then bring that knee in. Take the opposite foot back, turn the toe under, press through the heel. Deepen the stretch into that calf. Make sure you haven't travelled back with it, so keep the shoulders stacked over the wrists. Beautiful. Isolate the stretch into the back of the calf. Then bring that knee again back in towards centre. Perfect. Turn both toes under. Exhale, draw the tummy button in, roll up through the spine. So we did the cat stretch seated. We can see a little bit more visually what's happening here. So make sure that it's the lower back that's lifting. It's very easy to curve the shoulders. Let's really focus on lifting the tummy button up, tucking the chin down towards the chest. Then reversing the curve, resting on top of the feet as you inhale to lift the chest forward. So we should feel a big difference between exhaling, rolling up, and inhaling, lifting the chest forward. Depending on the preference of your back, some of us love the cat stretch, some of us love the cow pose, and we usually don't like the opposite. We'll come back now into neutral spine. Beautiful. I'm going to ask you to lower down onto the elbows, so the forearms once more are attached to the floor. Stepping the feet back, let's come into a lower plank here. So half plank, elbows under shoulders, engaged in the 
four, strong in the thighs, breath, nice and controlled, full deep breath in through the nose, then as you exhale, float the thighs, the belly, the chest to the floor. You might want to widen the elbows a little just to create a little more space, repositioning the elbows either side of the chest, the palms either side of the head, so the forearms are now fully connected to the floor. Push down into the forearms, inhale to lift the chest. So we're back into that easy cobra pose. Then on the out breath, lower down. You can either repeat that nice and gentle upper back lift, or if you prefer, you can join us in a full cobra. So hands either side of the chest, elbows drawn in. Pressing into the thighs is important. So push the thighs to the mat. Inhale, lift the chest. Protect the lower back as you lift and lengthen. Keep softening those shoulders away. Keep those elbows nice and released. Then on the out breath, engage the core. Lift the belly first. Push the sit bones again towards the heels. Lovely long stretch. Ears between the upper arms. So before we kept the palms stuck to the floor when we did our child's pose, this time we're going to lift the fingertips from the mat, pressing the wrist to the floor. Just slightly changes the emphasis of the stretch. Gives us a little more release into the triceps. Then replace the palms, lift back up. We're working our way back up to standing. So we're kind of doing the little sequence that we did with the lunge, the opposite way around. So the last time we had the right leg doing all the work. So this time we're gonna have the left leg doing the work. So we're just doing it the opposite way. So we're going to begin by striking the right foot forward. We'll check in that that knee isn't rolling in. Remember, we prefer it over the second and third toe. That back shin is nicely connected with the mat. And if you're feeling a lot of grit on your knee, chances are you're somewhere back here and that's no good for the knee joint. So you want to travel past that point, opening into the front of the thigh, into the hip flexor, but making sure that you're not exaggerating this 90 degree on the front knee. Lift the hands to an Anjali Mudra. Slow your breathing down again. Inhale to lift the arms overhead. A little bit of focus, a little bit of balance, a little bit of loving in your life. Keep that core engaged, bring the hands back to heart center. As you exhale, hinge forward. Fingertips to the floor, turn the back to under, lift the knee. So I'm always far too stretched out. So bounce that back foot in if you need to. Pop that heel to the floor. Oh yeah, I like that stretch. It's easier on the way down than it is on the way back up because there's a little bit more balance required. So if it helps you to place the hands onto the thighs, do so. We're coming up into the standing lunge. So when we did it the first time, we struck the foot back. This time the foot's already in position. We're striding forward. So make sure that front knee remains 90 degrees, good. Perfect. Make sure the hips are square, shoulders stacked underneath, uh, above the hips. Bring the hands to an Anjali Mudra. Push into that front foot, engage the core, step forward. Yay! We've all finished in the same place at the same time. Beautiful. Keep those feet hip width apart, no wider. Inhale to lift the arms overhead. Keep the knees nice and soft. As you exhale, we're going to come beyond the 90 degrees. We're going to place the fingertips towards the floor. So I know I don't have enough flexibility to get the palms to the floor. So I'm going to start it nice and easy. Knees are soft, fingertips. 
So let's correct the upper body now, because chances are we've curved the spine. Engage the core to draw the tummy button in, then inhale to widen through the chest, draw the shoulder blades together. Notice that that's just hugged the belly a little closer to the thighs. Walk the hands a little further forward. Keep looking towards the end of the fingertips. Then as you exhale, start to tuck the chin under, start to bring, bring the palms of the hands towards the floor. It doesn't matter if you have a bend in the knees here. It's more important that we keep the spine long than we worry about that big, nasty stretch near the back of the hamstrings. Keep the core engaged. We're lifting the arms up now. So the wrists will be in line with the shoulders. We're creating a T-shape. Draw the shoulder blades together. As you exhale, engage the core. As you inhale, you're simultaneously pushing into the feet, lifting the chest. On the next inhalation, lift the arms overhead. Bring the palms together. Lift up and lengthen. Exhale, ease back. Don't press the hips forward. Then inhale, lift. Bring the hands back to heart centre. Beautiful. Easy peasy. So I'm just going to change my position. You can stay where you are. Um, we're going to do some a bit more balance work now, so a little bit more focus. So we're going to work through the tree pose. We're going to break it down so that it starts really easy and supported, and then we'll build it up into a balance pose. So again, good mountain, heels hip width apart. We'll start by just lifting that right heel from the floor. So that usually means a bend in the right knee. Then we'll roll that knee out and we're just going to park the heel above the left ankle. So it does help if you get quite an exaggerated turnout on that knee. Put your hands on your hips and you can just feel as soon as you turn that knee, your hips tend to follow. So let's try to keep the hips where they are, keep the shoulders above the hips and take that knee a little bit wider. So we're really activating this upward lift and draw out an external rotation. Good. Bring your focus to a horizon point. Try not to have that too close to you. So look a little bit further away. Find a point where you can Allow your focus to rest. This is your drishti point. And then if and when you feel ready, simply lift the foot off the floor, park the sole of the foot to wrap around the calf. So it's not as high as the knee. The hips are square, the shoulders are square, but we're keeping our balance because we're looking at that point ahead. It does help, I've actually got a point on the wall where we've obviously splattered a fly. And if I can just keep focusing on that. Beautiful. The arms can do a thing if you want. You can be here. This is usually quite nice for balance. I like here because I like to imagine the centre line. Or you can be here if you want to be fancy. Obviously that's a lot of effort. And it's certainly a lot of effort if you're in a sloping ceiling Antonia <laughs> so that's a bit cheaty actually yeah I'm just going to hold on to the develop because that'll work now draw that right knee to face forward and replace that foot to the floor ouch it's hard wiggle the hips one of your butt cheeks will have been working a lot harder than the other <laughs> So let's do the opposite side. So again, we're gonna start with a nice supported version. So we're simply picking up the heel. We're almost like leaning against the supporting leg. What we're focusing on here while we're connected to the floor is that we get enough rotation on that knee without sacrificing the hips. So hips are square, shoulders are square. Tune into your breath. Find your drishti point. 
So allow yourself to focus. And when you're ready, if you're ready, you can slide the sole of the foot up. I had to do when you're talking. Hips, shoulders, facing forward. Arms doing a thing. Doesn't matter which thing it is. You've all got much better balance than me. And when you're ready, roll that knee forward, replace that foot to the floor. Beautiful. So oftentimes when we do the tree pose and we haven't held it for that long, there's a little bit of um, achiness that happens just above the hips. So you kind of almost feel like you're a bit imbalanced now at the back of the hips. So let's take the feet wider. We want to make sure that the insides of the feet are parallel. So it feels a bit odd because naturally the toes want to turn out. So anchor the feet so that you are on train tracks. And then again, if you've locked those knees, soften them. Just natural bend is good. Place the hands onto the hips as you exhale, hinge forward. And again, only come as far as your hips will allow. If it's the if it, your muscles are tight and that's what's holding you back, go for gold. But if it's your hip joints that are telling you no more, they win. So with every exhale, you kind of can come beyond that 90 degree angle. I think it's a good idea to keep the shoulders parallel to the floor. There comes a point where almost like you're lifting your head in order to keep parallel. So Follow the natural line at the back of your neck, and that might mean that your gaze is now to the end of your mat, or it might be between your feet. If you feel better to do so, bring the fingertips or the palms to the floor. I quite like a little bit of a wider fold, so heel to the feet a little wider apart. If the back of the thighs are holding you back, walk the hands a little further forward. It just takes that straight away. Try to make sure you're not leaning into your hand, you're not holding yourself up. Push the sit bones back, lift the tailbone, exhale to hinge the elbows, bringing the forearms parallel to the floor. So at this point, if you were using props, you might put a brick or a cushion or a blanket under your head. Or if like me today, you've got a bit more than a brick's depth, you might just be quite happy to let gravity hang you in this forward fold position. Let's bring the gaze to the end of the fingertips. Walk the hands a little further back towards the body. Take a bend in the right knee and walk the hands over in front of that right foot. Now, when I do this, I have to lift my heel from the floor. My, um, my body doesn't let me keep my heel to the floor. And you'll notice that I've extended the left leg and turned the toe up. So again, we're into the back of the leg rather than hammering the inner thigh. Then we'll just take the weight on the hands as we walk through center. So the heel can lift up. You don't want to be too far forward in that knee because you will feel it. So try to keep your body weight back. Again, this time the right toe is pointing up. Notice that real deep lengthening to the inner thigh. Beautiful. Press that heel to the floor, walk back to center. You're going to repeat your wide leg fold and I bet you'll find it a lot easier than you did a minute ago because we've just isolated the inner thighs a little more, giving them a little more of a stretch. You just find that little extra juice. So to avoid us feeling dizzy, we first of all look towards the end of the hands. We walk the hands back underneath the shoulders, but keep your gaze tracking forward and down. 
If you widen the legs like I did, heel toeing the feet a little closer can make you feel more stable. Keep looking down at the floor as you bring the hands onto the thighs. Keep looking down at the floor as you push into the thighs, lift the upper body up. We're still looking down at the floor because if we lift the head too quick, we will go dizzy. And when you're ready, lift the gaze. Beautiful. And step the feet together. Wow, that's one of my favourite sequences. I love it. I always feel taller, very lengthened in the inner thighs. Love it. Roll onto the balls of the feet, lift the heels from the floor. A little bit of balance on your tippy toes. Then replace the gaze. Lovely. I think you've earned the right, because it's quite warm now, <laughs> to lie down on your mat again. So we did start a little bit early. Joe, I'm very mindful that you often have to finish at seven. So I'm just going to give you that time call that is seven o'clock now if you need to jump off. Excellent. So come into a supine position. So your choice whether you extend the legs to come into a Shavasana pose, or if you prefer, you might want to keep the knees bent. If doing all of that forward fold action and hip action has created any discomfort in your lower back, just take a moment to hug the knees to the chest, have a little bit of a rock and roll, sort yourself out so that you will feel comfortable to release the full weight of your spine to the floor. So I'm quite mindful that um, much of that allowed us to open and externally rotate from the hips. So you might enjoy taking the feet a little wider. Sometimes, and we haven't done this for a long time, sometimes people quite like to rest in a supine Vadakanasana. So if you feel that you kind of want to keep going on the inner thighs and then around the hips, draw the soles of the feet together and let the knees release. You don't want to feel as though you're doing any work now. You want to feel as though this is the time to recharge, to rebalance. And find that reconnection again between the body and the breath. So again, remind yourself that we're not just going through the motions. We're deepening the inhalation until we feel the belly rise. We're lengthening the exhalation until we feel the weight of all those major joints ease into the floor. Back of the hips are heavy, shoulders are heavy, back of the head is heavy. With every inhalation, expanding and widening into the space that surrounds you. With every exhalation, taking up a little more space as you release and relax. I like to visualise the weight of my bones are sinking a little more deeply into the earth beneath me. The sense of the earth coming home, a resting place cooling all that gorgeous yin energy a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth Starting to become aware of the length of your breath. Let's try to measure the length of the breath. Breathing in for a count of four. Then breathing out for a count of four.
Breathing in for four. Breathing out for four. Now let's see if we can take that cleansing release of the out breath a little further by breathing in for a count of four, but breathing out now to a count of six. The out breath slightly longer than the in breath. That next inhalation is going to feel a little deeper now. Bringing that out breath to that lengthened count of six. Then taking it even further, taking a deep breath in to a count of four, breathing out now to a count of eight. So you might feel towards the last two counts of the breath that you're empty and there's nothing more. So take that full deep breath in, fill the lungs completely. And almost as though you're letting the breath out slowly, gently, doubling the length of the out breath to the in breath. So continue with this doubled up exhalation. I'll give you a moment of quiet so that you can focus on your breath. Let's nudge this next exhalation back to a count of six. And again. Returning now to equal length to the breath in and the breath out. Balancing the breath. Slowly returning to a natural, easy rhythm. No counting, no forcing the breath. Bringing your awareness back now to the physical body, to your space within this room. Gradually returning sensation now between the fingers and toes. Wiggling the jaw and the nose. There's no rush. In your own time, either taking a long stretch through the body or hugging the knees to the chest. Starting to make those little movements. Wake the body up. Take a moment 
to roll to one side. If your eyes were closed, blinking the eyes open. Then returning once more to a seated position. Again, it shouldn't feel like hard work, so just be comfy. Bring your hands to an annual Nidra. Touch to the head for kind thoughts. To the lips for kind words. And to the heart for kind intentions. The light in you honours the light in you. Namaste. So I can see by how spaced out you look that you really did do your breathing. <laughs> well done everyone. I actually felt a little bit guilty bringing you round at the end. That was a bit naughty. <laughs> <laughs>